It sounds as though the next installment of I Am A Cat may take a macomb turn. I think this is a fool's errand. The more we press your altar friend on what he saw, the more entrenched he's going to become. Oh dear. How awkward. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to be that she was stabbed a victim multiple times. She was stabbed multiple times. How can you be sure of that? Very simply. From the blood on the blade. That... Proofs? Nothing. How about the holes in the body? Can I get an autopsy? The blood... When I entered the hut, I saw the defendant holding the blade raised and aged up in the air. Yes, yes. That's right. I saw it too. Oh. And I noted that there was blood on the blade already at that point. In other words, the victim had already been stabbed at least once by the time I arrived on the scene. Yes, yes, that's right. I saw it, too. And the victim was already holding the defendant's fountain pen in her hand, too. All of which means I can be sure the victim did not die instantly. Yes, yes, right. I saw it, too. Maybe a year in London was too much for him. He sounds like he's forgotten how to speak Japanese. The logic of your argument is sound at least. No, it isn't! She was stabbed once. It was raised in the air. Is the detective now saying he saw a second stab? Because then it's case closed. But you saying from the blood on the blade is bullshit. Well, as I said, it is my guiding principle to carry out all testimony flawlessly. Perhaps it should have been your guiding principle to protect the victim flawlessly. That's just my personal opinion, of course. <laughs> I like when the game gives me the exact thing I want to, like, throw in their fucking faces. <sighs> Counsel, you will refrain from mocking the witness. Sometimes it's deserved. Oh no, I just have so many thoughts swirling around in my head. So all I can do to stand here, wide-eyed and mute. Goodness, my dear, you really must try to calm down. But how am I supposed to find an inconsistency in what the two gentlemen are saying? I don't see why either of them would have any reason to lie. What you must remember, I think, is that witnesses may inadvertently lie at times for various reasons. A misunderstanding, a mistaken observation, a delusion, even... Ah, a delusion. What's important is that we determine the truth, and there's only one way to be sure of that. Yes, with evidence, of course. Spoken like a true judicial assistant. During witness testimony, you can use R to pick a piece of evidence to present for consideration. So you need to listen carefully to each statement and compare to what's details in the court record. If you find some conflicting information, that may be the inconsistency you're looking for. Yes, it was all about inconsistencies. Once you've identified a witness statement that appears to conflict with your piece of evidence, present the evidence to the witness with X. The way ahead will present itself to you, I'm sure. Yes, all right then. Now consider the details of all the evidence in the court record against each statement to find an inconsistency. I hope I'm up to the task. Don't forget that you can have the witnesses repeat their statements as many times as you'd like. Everyone at the stop. Everyone has to start at the beginning. Remember those wide ideas are quite forgivable. And besides, there's no one else to defend the poor girl. You're right. I need to listen to testimony again from the start. I need to look at the court record. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna look. On the day of the incident, I was working special surveillance because time of the death, 2 p.m. Death is believed to be due to trauma from the victim's lung. Only single wound was identified. Okay. A photograph of a printed scene taken from the police custom of the incident occurred and stabbed wound the victim's back is clear. Okay, not this one, not this one. Ran to the beach hut, stabbed wildly. I saw the blood on the blade. It proved to me that she'd been stabbed victim multiple times. Present? Objection. Present.
With that accusatory cry that just welled up from deep inside me, I think I finally understand. Every time Kazuma uh, uh, and Naruhoto have stood here at this bench, the stakes have been very, very high indeed. What? What's the meaning of this menacing pose, Council? I'd like the witness to clarify something for me. Who? What? What? Who, what, where, when, how? Not you, Sosuke-san. The query is directed at Inspector Hosonaga. At me. In your statement just now, you said the victim was stabbed multiple times. Yes, that's right. As said, and when I entered the hut, the defendant was already stabbed, ending over the victim, bloody knife in hand like a murderous demon. And yet, that cannot be. What? Get to the point, please, Counsel. Hosomaga, you're a bad detective. <laughs> That's my point. In the postmortem report, it clearly states that the victim was stabbed one time only. Ah. <coughs> In other words, Inspector Hosonaga's testimony is clearly flawed. And so is Sosuke's. And Sosaki-san's. And me. You claim to have seen in, in Ray in the throes of stabbing the victim. Y yes, I did. Wildly. But both of you and you and the specter confirmed the same point. There was already blood on the knife that you saw the defendant holding. Yes, and it's quite simple. We know the murder weapon was used to stab the victim only once. Therefore, there is no way there could have been blood on the knife if that single stabbing hadn't already occurred. Ah, true. The what exactly is your contention, Council? Are you ever going to tell us? Yes, Your Excellency. There is only one logical conclusion. Was his ecky? He in fact saw was not the moment that the defendant stabbed the victim at all, but the moment the defendant, in fact, withdrew the blade from the victim's body. That, that can't be. Excellent work, Suzato. You exploded at them with the, an objection and then proceeded to pull them apart systematically. Well, well, this takes me back. Yes, I seem to remember your cousin staged the scene much like this in that trial nine months ago. A half-witted child with a half-baked objection attempting to steal the show. You're right, there were certain similarities. Except that so-called half-witted child managed to outwit the prosecution, who had only half a head of hair. Slander! My head is quite adequately dressed. In any case, all this talk of stabbing and withdrawing and multiple wounds, it makes not a jot of difference. What? Why not? Engage your brain, young man. When the accused first plunged a deadly weapon into the victim, that was the fatal blow. And it was at that moment that she had just withdrawn the blade, ready for her next trait that the witnesses saw. The knife was already tainted with blood because the accused had already stabbed the victim. Ah. All you have successfully shown is that, with your little display, is that the mustached author is prone to moments of ex extravagance. Why did my brain blink? I am in agreement with the prosecution. If the defendant was seen wielding the blade at all, that is sufficient grounds for her actions to be viewed with suspicion. But, but if she was withdrawing the blade, then we are back where we started. Sorry. Consider this, young Yoko boy. If the student girl is innocent as you claim, then why would she have pulled the blade from the victim? And with a demon's cold, with a demon's cold-blooded composure too. The prosecution demands an explanation, and it better be good. 
Why did Ray pull out the knife? Oh, yes, going for the jugular. Hmm. What does Father mean by that? Let the court hear your answer then, Counsel. The truth is, I don't really know. But I have come up with a plausible reason here, or we don't have a case. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife and blade was surely so that she could... I mean, the only one that would give a defense would be save her life. According to the postmortem report, the victim's death was not instant. That is correct. It is thought that she would have remained conscious for a while after sustaining the injury. Indeed, giving her time to take hold of the piece of evidence that clearly indicates her guilt. I have a question. Stabbed once. Blade taken out. Detective shows up. Other person, author shows up. Wouldn't she still have been alive if it was an instant by the time they got there? If she's already pulling it out and the victim's potentially still alive? Was more not done to keep her that way? <laughs> Indeed, giving her time to take hold of the piece of evidence that clearly indicates her killer. The, the point is, being a medical research assistant, since Ray was compelled to act when faced with the wounded victim. Instinctively, she pulled the blade out in an attempt to save Miss Barrett's life. Did you hear that, Your Excellency? It would seem that this is the best we can expect of this young yokel. Hmm. Indeed. It's a defense! Fuck off! Is it just me, or does it feel much colder in here? Your Excellency, if I may. Speak, witness. I would like another opportunity to testify. In respect to the slipshod assertion just put forth by the Yokel Defense Council, I mean. Slipshod? What the fuck does slipshod mean? I'm feeling insulted. I'm annoyed. Slip shod. Typically of a person or method of work characterizing by lack, lack of care, thought, or organization. You asshole. You have some slip shot fucking detective work, I'll say that. Our young yokel hopefully has a m modicum of knowledge when it comes to the law, it seems. But in matters of medicine, he appears to possess not one iota of common sense. Which is actually kind of true. You should not take the blade out if for stab wounds. <laughs> because that just makes it so much worse for the bleeding. Whatever stabbed in will act as a little bit of a barrier here if left there. Or to avoid more damage image and would damage more if pulled out very well then inspector i will permit your request you will testify again before the court on the subject of the defense counsel's assertion yes sir i will do so flawlessly well you already fucked up your first testimony so let's try again motherfucker forensic medicine and primer Holding a blade from a wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. That's basic knowledge of any medical research assistant it's in with an ounce of sense ought to know. In other words, there's no good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull the knife from the victim. Let's not forget that the young student did have a motive for killing the victim. The man the victim murdered nine months ago, Dr. Wilson, was the defendant's highly respected mentor. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna pick that shit apart. <laughs> Is what you just said true, Inspector? Could pulling a knife from the wound really cause was the wound to heavily bleed heavily? Yes. Think of the weapon itself as a stopper in the wound that prevents excessive blood loss. Until the doctor is ready to provide proper treatment, that the stopper should be removed. 
Oh, I... I mean, she's a medical assistant, maybe... She considered herself able to provide the care? Oh, I, I see. Hmm. This is why Yoko should stay on the farm. Even a quack from some obscure mountain village would have such basic knowledge. Anyone's ever given someone a little poke with a knife and pulled it out, not against news. Ouchie, excuse me, have you stabbed somebody? <laughs> oh, well, I've never stabbed anyone, you see, or pulled a blade out of a wound, so... Of course you haven't. I didn't bring you up to behave like a bandit. Father, is it true what they're telling me? Yes, it's basic your remedial knowledge for medics. Ray would have been well aware of it. If she were to claim ignorance of such fundamentals, that would prove fatal in many ways. But then why would Ray have done it? Could she have pulled that knife in full knowledge that it would be fatal for Miss Barrett? I don't know. Okay, here's a particularly <laughs> weird question. If, I'm not gonna read this right now, but if, say, someone gets stabbed, you witness stabbing, you pull it out. I think there is something thing of like a, I don't know if it's a law that protects or a law that allows for prosecution of, of, hey, you you tried to do CPR on this person, you broke their rib cage and caused further damage or something. Thing. I know there's like some rulings or some. I've heard of something like that. Of like the. It's not the bystander factor because that's something else. I'm trying to remember it, but. I feel like there's some sort of law or some sort of, if not law, of some sort of coding that, hey, you tried to help and maybe it's, I can't tell if it's either, either, yes, you tried to help, but you did so with ignorance, so you just caused more damage, you shouldn't have helped at all, kind of thing, and that allows people to be more prosecuted for those occurrences. It's but hey, if you're also in a situation where, hey, a person I don't like just got stabbed, let me pull this out so they can bleed to death. <laughs> Does that just make you an accessory to the attempted murder? <laughs> kind of thing? Ray never once mentioned anything about the knife to me. It seems almost impossible to believe, but... Could my friend actually have... Suzato? Yes, pull yourself together. We mustn't lose sight of why we're here. Ah. Counsel, it's time for your cross-examination. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. However, I must warn you that if your cross-examination fails to identify any issue with the established facts, I will be moving to by adjudication immediately afterwards. Fuck. I understand. Believing in your client, I am some fighting for their case until the bitter end. I knew it would be hard, but I had no idea it would be this hard. Okay. Pulling a blade from a wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. I don't think I should press that. As basic knowledge of any medical research assistant with analysis. Those sins ought to know. In other words, there's no good reason why the defender would have tried to pull the knife from the victim. But the defendant had suddenly encountered somebody she knew lying on the ground, bleeding to death. The sight could have shocked her delicate sensibilities, causing her to remove the blade inadvertently. I don't really think an inadvertent action can explain this. The woman is a medical research assistant. Oh, it does move! It has a little bobble head on the turtle! I can't imagine she would behave so irrationally. Oh. But irrational behavior is a woman's prerogative, isn't it? Oh dear, you have a lot to learn about women. 
Only a simple-minded man could have such bigoted views. I mean... Fuck this court system. <laughs> oh dear. Perhaps I'm letting my male persona take hold a little too much. Well, I have managed to convey the basics now. That should cover the medical side of the argument. Let's not forget that the young woman student did have a motive for killing the victim. The man and murder nine must go with a defense highly respected mentor. Well, yes, that's true. Dr. Wilson's recognized is Mbambi's talent and offer her the position of assistant despite her being a woman. She was extremely grateful to him. Yes, the Englishman and appears to have been a very broad-minded individual. Dr. Wilson had no time for outdated traditions. He met with the opposition, of course, but he believed firmly in Bobby's abilities. Clearly, the defendant was in the man's debt, which only serves to prove my point. This is hopeless. I can't find a single crack in this testimony anywhere. If Ray knew that withdrawing the knife from the wound would threaten Miss Brett's life further, I just can't think of any way to explain why she did it. Sato is in a time like these when it's especially important to remember the fundamentals. Fundamentals? Evidence is what counts in the courtroom, isn't it? Of course, but I've been through the court record dozens of times. I have actually only looked at it twice. you forgetting something, though. You need to take evidence at the fate. It's value. You can and must examine it in greater detail, too. Ah. I realize that your first time playing the role of a lawyer in the courtroom. So you need to remind you of the rudiments. You need only ask. I'll do my very best to help. Examine the evidence in the court record. It's an idea, certainly. Uh I don't I'm realizing one thing. I'm guessing this might have been taken after the fact. I can't tell what that is. That looks- I guess that's her dress. That's her in a robe. Her mask. Her case. I don't see... There's her fucking purse. There's a kitty cat! Whoever took this picture have a broken camera lens? I can't examine this. Why are there different masks? Call it a single side wound up with a curve within minutes. The stream. Stream meiosis? Pupil constriction was observed in the victim in both eyes. Ascertained by examination. Now I'm going to look up meiosis. Incessive constriction of the pupil of the eye. Does that mean... Potentially something else was going on? Like it wasn't necessarily... Come to think of it, Kazuma Son and Naruhoto were always turning evidence over and over in their hands. Yes, I need to examine things in greater detail with A. Ah, by the look in your eyes, I see it's coming back to you. Go to the court record again and have a thorough look at everything you may find a clue. 
do it straight away. I don't know if that without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. are very clearly engraved here, and the fact that Miss Barrett was clinging to this pen in her dying moments very clear message too. To identify killer, you mean? I don't think there can be any doubt in this key piece of evidence in this case. What is that? There's some sort of emblem here, look. But it isn't a Yuma University one. It must belong to some other organization, I suppose. A business of some kind. But that woman simply pie the pen doesn't, in fact... <sighs> we take off the pen's lid. Now let's unscrew the barrel, shall we? This must be a little reservoir that holds ink. Yes, you fill it by drawing ink from the bottle through the nib. Is something wrong, Father? There doesn't actually appear to be any ink in there, that's all. Yes, you're right, it's pretty much empty. Well, it could be on the verge of running out, I suppose. I don't think this is a fucking pen. From victim, basic knowledge. Words, there's no good reason why the defendant would have pulled the blade from the victim. Young student did have a motive for killing the victim. Man, in fact, murdered nine months ago, Dr. Wilson. Okay. No good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull a knife from the victim. <sighs> basic knowledge of any. Is there more I can see here now? Oh, there is some stuff here now. What is it? This is a newspaper from Silski's son. There seems to be an important article on the back page as well. Exclusive deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Research Laboratory. From Yume's medical research, Father, isn't that your lab? What the? Let me see that. The poison's been stolen. It's this morning's paper that Sosuke gave us. Are you saying you didn't know? As embarrassing as for the, uh, as that is for the head of the laboratory, I didn't. I've not heard of such any such thing. Where on earth could the reporter have gleaned his information? Come to think of it, there was no article mentioning the story in our paper this morning, was there? A highly toxic poison we've been working on in strict confidence. I put Ray in charge of the project. Ray? She was managing it? What's written here is true, it means that she tried to hide the depth from me. And moreover, the details were leaked somehow. I, I don't believe it. We need to read this article very carefully. Rakshas England returnees tell all. This is the interview you and Soski's is on, isn't it, Father? It looks as though it's quite an exchange. Yes, he became a little overanimated when he was talking about his time in England. The photographer managed to capture the moment of his hand karate you chopped me on the neck. I do hope you weren't hurt. I do wonder why there is a crack on the image. 
following lecture, you may by Sosuke. Sosaki on the 11th August, it comes to light that a very disturbing incident took place. A deadly poison being secretly developed at the university's forensic science laboratory was stolen. Even the smallest amount entering the body via uh, either mouth or via wound from a prison lace blade from a poison lace blade would have fa grew fatal in minutes. Current methods cannot detect a newly developed chemical. University would have been consulted. Onset of symptoms occur in minutes, starting with impaired breathing, ending with acute constriction of pupils prior to death. Such symptoms would have since toxin. Apparently, it's entirely new. The thesis of alkaloids rumored to have been commissioned by the military. I wonder if this article is the reason. Give me a second. Wait, wait. Options. We're gonna do a little safety measure. Doing a little save here. Just in case. Oh wait, go back. This one present. I'm wondering if it's about this poison. No, there is one possibility. One very good reason why the defendant might have decided to withdraw the knife from the victim's wound. What? Yoko has not a proper grasp of the law, but also a poor loser. Tell us then, what possibility do you think you've identified? It's here, in this newspaper article. An article about a deadly poison having been stolen from a laboratory at Imperial Yumei The victim perished from a stab wound. Poison has no relevance in this case. But, yes it does! Prosecutor Nirauchi, you will let the defense speak. But, but the newspaper article, the court can out rely on what kind of hearsay those wretched publications carry. Counsel for the defense. I am going to need some tangible basis for your claim. You will indicate the court precisely what part of the newspaper article may mention to affirm your assertion. Your Excellency? Yes, of course. Thank you. Ray would never have done something to further endanger Miss Brett's life without just cause. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife from the victim's body is explained in the article where it says... Uh, court record. University deadly poison. Even a small amount of your body veil wound mouth. Prison would prove fatal in minutes. Current or methods cannot detect. Why is pointing out onset and symptoms occur in minutes, starting with impaired breathing with it. Would prove. Fatal in minutes. Deadly in tiny quantities. I would think deadly in tiny quantities. Hopefully, like, if I pull it out, maybe. It is rapidly absorbed and causing death in minutes. Are you suggesting if the knife used to attack Miss Burris was laced with this very poison, it would explain why the defendant, Mambe Esan, would have withdrawn the blade as soon as possible. Yes, the truth is, it was an attempt to stop the poison from entering the victim's body. What? Attention! This is complete and utter nonsense. Not at all. The defendant withdrew the knife blade from the victim's body not to accelerate the woman's demise, but to save her life, and the prosecution cannot deny the possibility. Have you not read the postmortem report? The cause of death was hemorrhage. The word poison appears nowhere in the document. Well, it also says in the news article, it's not detectable. Well, well, that's, that's because by acting quickly to remove the blade, the defendant prevented the poison from taking hold. No, I already have the answer. Oh, please, this is clearly desperation. The weasel last breaking of the wind. Poison has nothing whatsoever to do with this case, as 
I believe the defense is well aware. We have no proof that the information in this wretched newspaper article is reliable anyway. In that situation, what the student should have done is wait for medical assistance to arrive. But instead, you claim she suspected poisoning and took the potential lethal decision to remove the blade. She must have had a strong reason for suspicion then, and argu or the argument makes no sense. Exactly. Well put, Inspector. On what grounds did she do it? Hmm? Yoko? Why did Ray Smith tell the boy was involved? If you want grounds, I'll give you grounds. What? You, you can't possibly. From your expression, Council, it appears that those are not empty words. By nat but naturally, you will stand in this courtroom as a lawyer, you must be aware that words alone, empty or not, are of no value in our modern justice system. The court demands evidence. Yes, Your Excellency, I am well aware of that. I've seen it many times from my place by his side, at his side in the Old Bailey. In that case, counsel, you present the proof to the court now. What evidence demonstrates a clear link between this case and the poison in the newspaper article? It'd be this, right? I'm gonna go with this, cause it says the pupils. I would ask the court to refer the notes section of the postmortem report, which reads, Extreme meiosis, pupil constriction was observed in the victim. Ah, clearly, being a yokel with no knowledge of forensic science, I have no idea, so please do tell me. Presumably, the fact that this condition of the victim was noted in the postmortem report means that it's an unusual symptom of death. Well, under normal circumstances, the pupils dilate when someone dies. If there were an extreme constriction instead, that most certainly unusual, yes. What are you doing, you yokel detective? In the newspaper article, there is the following information about the stolen poison. Onset of symptoms occur in minutes, ending with an acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. What? If the defendant, upon seeing the victim stabbed in the back, happened to notice that the pupils of Miss Barrett's eyes had constricted severely, Yes, as a medical research assistant, she would have had suspected poison immediately, without doubt. Hmm. Mm. Prosecutor Auchi, I think you'll agree this is a very compelling evidence. You, you, yokel student and yokel professor. Dude is not a yokel professor. <laughs> I believe the defense has expertly demonstrated a credible reason for the defendant's actions. No. Eugene Mikotoba? Yes, Your Excellency. I believe you are best placed here to confirm or deny the veracity of the defense's counsel argument. You will tell the court the truth about the details reported in the newspaper, please. It pains me to have to admit it. But I'm afraid I don't know. You don't know. The toxin was kept under lock and key in my laboratory, certainly, but I'm unaware of any theft. Do you mean to tell the court that the reports of the theft are unfounded? No, Your Excellency. Without returning to the laboratory to investigate myself, I couldn't say. Ha! Huh, listen to the bumbling epidemic. Unaware of the theft of a secret state research from his own workplace it's until he reads it it's a bit in the newspaper I take full responsibility for the incompetence of my supervision father a pitiful situation for a university professor you should have more control over your students rather than allowing them off on a killing spree that's that's totally unfounded. Actually, little founded. Dude didn't know. Let's see. 
None of this is Professor Megatoba's fault. It's all... It's all my fault. Ray? Membezon, you stand accused here. Outbursts like that will not be tolerated. But... It was me. I was the one who noticed that the poison we're developing had been stolen that day. What? So you knew. I'd been placed in charge of overseeing the project. It was the day that the professor and Sosuke-san were interviewed together for the newspaper. That was when I noticed some of the poison was missing. Just a tiny amount it was. Why didn't you let me know immediately? I... I was scared. The whole project was supposed to be confidential, but some of the toxin had been, somehow been taken. So, I decided to try and get it back before anyone else found out. Because I had a very I good idea of who the thief was. The thief? You, you don't mean... Yes, of course. It was the dainty English woman. Miss Jezile Barrett? Tell I me mean, I couldn't believe it. That was why I decided to join a little group of people going to the seaside. Inside the beach hut, I confronted Miss Barrett. But she just sat on a stool while at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me as if she knew she was untouchable. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well now, whatever do you mean? And then, she suddenly got to her feet before falling to her knees in front of me and then collapsing on the floor. That's when I saw the knife in her back. I couldn't understand what had just happened. And then a moment later, I was seized with fear. The pupils of her eyes, had, they had shrunk to tiny pinpoints. I don't believe it. In other words, you realize that the victim was suffering the effects of the poison. poison. My mind started racing. I hadn't seen anything past Miss Barrett's lips whilst we'd been with her, which left only one possible way for the poisoner to have entered her body, on the blade of her knife in her back. That train of thought was what spurred you to withdraw the blade. Yes. If the amount had entered her bloodstream was small enough, she might still have a chance. That's what I'd hope. Really, I... I'm so sorry for staying silent all this time. I know where the poison was. I don't know how she got a hold of a pen with it. I still don't know who fucking stabbed her. <laughs> Your attempt to hide the truth of what happened is not something that can be overlooked. However, I have duly noted the courage with which you confessed in the end. Thank you, Your Excellency. It's barely perceptible, but I do think the balance has shifted a little here in this courtroom now. And there out she goes. Your Excellency, do not be deceived. The victim just collapsed before your eyes, you say. Well, Membesan, if that's the case, could you explain how Miss Barrett came to be stabbed? Well, uh, you have no answer because the simple truth is that you stabbed the victim motivated by revenge. But you have no conclusive evidence to prove that assertion, do you? Oh, I have evidence, and it is very much conclusive. When the prosecution counsel up to, it was brief, but he hesitated for a moment there. I'm almost sure of it. You will produce the aforementioned evidence at once, Prosecutor Auji. Perhaps some praise is due, young yokel student. What? I had imagined there would be no need for me to submit this evidence. It's fucking evidence! I don't care! Submit it anyway! Ah, <sighs> oh, but you've brought this on yourself. What the? 
Could more damning shot exist? The cruelty in the air of the beach is almost palpable. This evidence, more than any other, reveals the true extent of the huge murderous nature. For the show's precise moment, that Membesan plunged her dagger into the victim's back. No, that's not true, no. I, I don't believe it. Order, order, order. Counsel for Defense, was it you who was responsible for that shrill scream that just pierced my courtroom? Perhaps' his voice has yet to break. These yokels are slow of mind and slow to mature. I'll show you who's slow to mature. Careful now. Suzato is starting to show her face here. It is often said that a picture is worth a thousand words, but here we have ample proof. The court will accept this extremely cogent photographic print as evidence. How? We already established she pulled the knife. How does this confirm it was stabbed in here or not pulled out? This is bullshit. The incriminating photo has been entered into her record. I can't believe he's had a photograph like that up his sleeve the entire time. It's such a stark image, I'm genuinely lost for words. Wait a minute, I, I don't understand. How did you, I mean, who took that photograph? Ray. That is of no importance here. Stop trying to avert her attention. It, okay, no, fuck, do not. It is of utmost importance here. Uh oh. That's an absurd thing to say. It's crucially important. Whoever took this photograph print was a witness to Miss Barrett's death. The court must be allowed to hear this person's testimony. I will uphold the defense's demand. The prosecution will reveal the identity of the person responsible for taking this photograph at once. Well, I'm afraid I can't do that. Pardon? You see, this print arrived at the Imperial Police Borough headquarters by express post yesterday. But there was something to indicate the sender's name or address the province of the print is unknown. I know who took it. Or at least I have knowledge of who else he photographed. Are we to understand then, counsel? Then in full knowledge of the fact that this photograph has the murkiest of origins, you nevertheless believe it fit for submission as evidence in the Supreme Court? When you first produced that print before, I noticed that you hesitated for a brief moment, because you knew that it wasn't completely a reliable evidence, didn't you? Silence, you yokel student and blabbering professor. What matters is the blatant truth that this print so eloquently expresses. But the defendant's already admitted to pulling the blade from the wound. Clearly, this isn't the moment that the knife was plunged into the victim's back, but... The moment it was withdrawn, don't waste this court's time with your ramblings. Indeed, without knowledge of who produced this print, we have no means of verifying the claim. And the scene it captures is without a doubt the most compelling evidence presented into the court. It absolutely is the pulling out. There wouldn't be already seeping blood everywhere if it was the immediate stabbing in. The knife's already half out. And the scene encounters is without a doubt the most compelling evidence presented to the court. If the defense is unable to shed any further light on the matter, I believe the conclusion is clear. You asshole. I'm sorry, Judge. What the fuck? You know they submitted compelling evidence. You're telling them that they need to compel on someone to testify I, I, because, hey, you witnessed this crime and you only submitted a fucking photograph. So now this is the time for you to fight. If what you established as far as true, then there can be no doubt. This photograph shows the moment that we withdrew the blade from the victim. Yes, we just need to prove that somehow. Now, plenty of time to rue your defeat on the slow train back to the provinces. 
And to rue the day you come up against Akasuchi Ochi in this court flaw. I can't. If I can't determine who took this photograph, then the trial is going to come to an end. There must be a clue somewhere. There must be some way of working out who took it. Well, counsel? Your Excellency? The burning question is who took that photograph, and the truth is. I need to look at this. Rochester tells all this is an interview. It looks as though it's quite exchange. The photograph image hand shot me in the neck. We weren't hurt. It's the same person who photographed that. So I think yeah, I just need to present that, considering it's not giving me I have the answer. This isn't about whether I can or can't come up with the answer now. I simply have to. Is, I assure you, something the defense can and will reveal. What? No, you can't possibly. But as you boldly claim, you can, please do enlighten us. Unfortunately, I am unable to present a name. How utterly underwhelming. Did you really believe you could? However, I am able to present evidence. The defense is a piece of evidence that reveals important detail about the photograph or his identity. What? Very well then, counsel. Present your proof to the counsel. True evidence you claim to reveal something about the identity of the photograph. For It'd be this one, right? Uh, present. What is that? The newspaper again? Roush's England returnees tell all. It's not the headline that's relevant here, Your Excellency. It's the photograph. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that there are some white lines on the right-hand side. Ah, yes indeed. They already caught my eye as it happens. What of it? A shadow of some... I'm kind, presumably, from the branches of a tree or the like. Inside, there are no trees growing inside my laboratory at the university, I can assure you. Now, if you look closely at this photograph... It's a crack in the fucking lens, good gracious. Yes, exactly the same pattern of lines present in this photograph, too. Well, very upsetting spaghetti tonight. Well, well, that that tells us nothing. Ah, yes, it's a shadow of some kind, definitely, but from the branches of the tree. Give me a moment. Okay, pupper has been calmed for now. Ow. My throat is already starting to murder me. Ah, yes, it's a shadow of some kind, definitely from branches of a tree. There wouldn't be any trees growing inside a hut at the beach, Council. Hmm. What's quite remarkable about it is that the two patterns are absolutely identical. How could such an extraordinary similarity have transpired? Here's matching powder that appears on both photographic prints as a result of a camera defect. Obviously, it must be due to a problem with the camera used to take the photographs. With with the photographic evidence? Yes. We can commonly say that the camera's lens must be scratched. And that the scratched lenses causes unwanted lines to appear on every print taken with the device. In short, the two photographs under our consideration here were taken with the same camera. Hmm. Hmm. But, but, there must be so hundreds of camera devices here in the capital. I would 
be utterly impossible to identify the owner of this particular one. It has an identifying scratch mark. I think you're forgetting, Presser. Prosecutor, ouchie. That one of the photographs featured in a newspaper article. A newspaper? Ah. That's right. The author of that article is the mystery witness to the crime. What? Oh, the author of the article also did the photograph? I see why you were called a Roxas England returnee. What are you yelling about? You've already testified. It's Minimo. I tell you, Minit. Many Memo. What the? Me, 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 Nemo. Me, 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 Ever since I returned to Japan, a reporter from, from the Shoyu News has been hounding me, following my every move. A reporter by the name of Rot Iten Mini Memo. Yes, hounding me from dawn till dusk. Ah, now that he mentions it. They secretly spy snapshots, scribble stories, and scope. Which are my privacy. Could that same reporter be? A camera to the left of him, a notebook to the right. There I am, stuck in the middle, with right and mini memo. So you're saying that this picture was taken by... By mini memo, yes, my lord, your excellency, Esquire. Officer, find this newspaper reporter at once and bring him to my courtroom. He was already in the courtroom. Where the fuck did he go? <laughs> I, we will adjourn for a short recess in the meantime. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. As, as you say, Your Excellency. And one more thing. I want this knife, the murder weapon, examined for traces of poison. You will solicit the assistance of the Imperial University's medical department for the task, understood? Meh. Mini memo. But it said the poison was undetectable, but granted, if it's also the place doing the research for it, they may have better ways of looking for it. At the very least. Okay. I'm actually going to save here and stop here just because my throat is dying. <laughs>